What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're not back in anything because, yes, it's Medieval Engineers, finally. So, what I decided to do to kick off is just do a really simple sort of tutorial tips thing explaining how some of the basic stuff works. So kicking off with number one, uh, and that is ropes, because ropes are a very big part of everything you're doing, uh, and how to connect them together, because that's obviously the, one of the very first things you want to do. So in front of me here, that's the rope drum and the rope loop, uh, the things that you uh, often end up connecting together, to be honest. And to connect them together, you literally just press T on the highlighted area, and then T on the target, and you can see they're connected, and I can press T to undo them again. But we're also gonna move on a bit with this, because they, that combines quite nicely with the handle here. And also with these two, the catch blocks, and their use is not quite so obvious. So if I get out one of these wooden blocks and I can make it longer and shorter using the mouse wheel, quite a nice little extra feature we've got, I'll stand that up there. And what a lot of people will do in the first attempt is get out one of these drums of rope because they want to make something that moves up and down, a drawbridge, say. Put it out, put a handle on the side, and then you'll try and turn it, and you'll notice that nothing appears to be happening. And the reason for that is all down to catch blocks. So if I get rid of this, and I'm gonna put another one of these down here, oops, in the right place, and then I'm gonna put a catch block on top. Now I've managed to not put it down. These, um, these little things can be a little bit fiddly to place at times. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to put a catch block on top, and in the catch block you can see there's actually a piece of wood in there, and that piece of wood can rotate. So if I get this out and shrink it back down, we can put a little piece of wood on one end there. We can put our rope drum on, and then on the other side of the catch block we can stick another block just to clear the edge, and we can put a handle on. And now, as you can see, when we press T, the entire thing rotates. And these catch blocks are very, very important in that respect. Anything that needs to rotate needs to go through a catch block. So think of it a bit like an axle. So there is actually two different types of catch block in the game. There is the catch block like that, and then there is a locking version here. So if I just put down, whereabouts are we gonna need it to be? About there, I think. So if I drag up some arms on this side as well, I can put a catch block on, and these connect together quite nicely. So if I put the locking version on this side, and the easiest way to connect these things up, you'll see that you have to kind of find the right spot. What you want to do to connect them up is to do it on this side, not on this side, and that will automatically join them together. So you'll see when I place that, that's shifted everything, so it's all one single piece now. And you can see as I spin this, this other end is also spinning. But the difference with the locking catch one is, as you would expect, if I lock that, it, although the graphic will still show it spinning, um, unfortunately, I think that's something to come. Oh, there you go, it won't spin that way now. So the graphic has actually, they've changed that, it seems. Uh, you will not be able to spin it in one of the two directions, depending on which way round you put this block on. And that can be useful for locking stuff in position. So if I now go back having undone it, you can see that that will spin. Uh, the other thing I need to mention with these with these drums is if I press T, you'll notice it's spinning that way. If I hold down Shift and press T, it'll spin the other direction. Uh, that, again, is it, it, it's a little thing, but very easy one to not know and then get frustrated by. So that's these ropes, but on their own, that doesn't do a huge amount. What we now need to do is try and make use of either the ropes or the catch blocks for something more. So I'm actually going to talk a little bit about how to use the catch blocks for something else. So if I get this block out and make it into a long beam again, you'll notice that I'll put that down and this, this won't move. This is fixed, a bit like a station grid in Space Engineers is. You can't move that. But I wanted to make an item that's capable of moving without using a catch block. So I actually just get something loose. I have to press J and that will remove it from being locked to the grid. And you can see this is now not snapping to things in the same way. And I can use this now to drop in the air. And you'll see that that's created a movable item. That item is not locked to the grid in any way. And what that means we can now do, if I uh, shorten this back down again and press J to go back to normal building, is anything we've built on here will also be capable of moving. So you can see that entire piece of wood can now be moved around. And it's a slightly different building style in Medieval Engineers because of it, because you're doing a lot of stuff where you're you're building with components like this and copy and pasting them around at the moment, or you're building sort of with stuff that moves and you have to think very closely about how and what order to build things in. But what I'm gonna do here is I build a sort of platform and I wanna build a cart. So I'm gonna just gonna build, build up a cart shape around it. But the cart shape is also gonna help us do something else because as you can probably guess, if I just finish this all off, so let's put some little walls in on the edge and on this side. 
I've put those down, but what I can't do now with these is put wheels on them, because if I want to put this wheel down, you can see it's not going to place, it's, it's in the floor. So I'm going to have to pick this up and turn it upside down in order to fit anything more on it. So if we do it like this, I know it's slightly lopsided for the purposes of this experiment, it does not matter. And now I can put the catch blocks on I need to make some axles. So let's just... I uh, still haven't quite got used to this slightly different rotation in medieval engineers versus space engineers. So we can put a few of these down, so we can have a front set of wheels and a rear set of wheels. And then we're going to connect them together down the centre to create proper axles. So you can see these are all linking together nicely if you can just get it in the right spot. There we go. And now this way around we can now put our wheels on because the entire thing is upside down. It's got the ground clearance it needs. So let me just stick some wheels on this edge. Uh, one. This is the correct way around for a wheel by the way. <laughs> and then down here we need to put some more of these on. Oop. Ah, gravity, how we like you. There we go, two of those, and then I can put my wheels on this side. And if we pick her up and spin her around, not only will that now be a separate object, but you can see the wheels actually work. Whereas if I was just to build a wheel on the ground like that, as you'd expect, that is a, an immobile object. So anything you build that needs to be moved needs to be built using J to some extent, at least to begin with. But there you go, that's, that's a sort of secondary use for these catch blocks, and you can see how the catch blocks are going to become very important in this as to do with anything you want to rotate. In order to demonstrate what else you can do with the rope drums, I'm going to make use of this, which is the twisted rope sort of torsion spring. So if we place one of these down on the ground here, you can see that there's a piece of rope there with a, with a bar on it. And this bar, if we run into it, you can see actually moves. And as we pull this back, and you need to make sure it's the right way around, so you can see we've got it this way around, it's gonna, the bar is going to gain tension as it moves this direction. So as we push this bar this way, it's going to gain tension. You can see it trying to push back against me. So we can do that, and we can put a catapult head on the end, if we can get it lined up just right. There we go. And this is where we can do something else or further with the rope drum. So by combining these torsion things, and this is obviously a very basic use of them, but you can make far more complex things. We can link those two items together. And then as we pull this, let's put it the right way, it's going to pull that thing back. The two objects are connected together. Now I have the option that I can either just cut the rope. So that's not far enough back. If we built this a bit lower down, this would actually work as a catapult. We could put a ball in it and so on, but you can see because of this angle here, we can't now pull that any further backwards. So I have a feeling that if we were to put a cannonball in there now, let's get a projectile out and give it a try. With these, again, you can mouse wheel to make them smaller or bigger. So, oh, I managed to place it on. Right, that's what happens if you don't use J. I didn't use J, so it actually connected it into the grid. So I need to go back down here, reset our catapult. Come on. Back you come. Ah, right. If this, I'm slightly glad this happened. If you ever have this problem where you've got two items that are connected together with rope but aren't working, there are two ways of fixing it. One of the things you can do if it's a very simple thing like this is just reconnect the rope up. And now this should work just fine and it will pull the catapult back again. If you've got something very complex and you don't want to do that, reload the game. Save it and reload and it will sort all the rope out again. But now we can see if I can do it right this time. We've got our ball and what we obviously don't want to be doing is having it actually connected to the grid like this. So we're going to press J to loosen it out and you just need to kind of position it about right. Let's make it the small one as well and that doesn't look too bad. Are you going to stay in there? Oh she is. Brilliant. So I can actually do a fire shot. So here all we need to do now in order to fire this is press T on here and not bad. Okay it's a static catapult but you can see the sort of distances you can get out. So that's how you can combine these sort of torsion rods, what they're uh, torsion rope springs, I think is what they call them, um, or tension rope springs, uh, with a drum to create something with force behind it. So that kind of covers almost all the blocks. We've got one left, and that is this big job here, which is the rotor. Uh, this doesn't work anything like in Space Engineers, other than it does actually have a separate head. This bit up here is separate from the base. If you break it, you'll see the top bit hangs around, the bottom bit doesn't. The only thing I really need to explain about these is that they will move on their own, but how to do so is really not obvious. So as you can see, if you just look at the center on the top, and this is the top, and press T, that's all you've got to do. And it'll now continue turning until I press T again. Uh, and that's how the rotors work. 
So that's kind of a lay down of the, the basic mechanical blocks in the game and how you can go about using them. Obviously you can make much more complex things than this, but everything in this is going to be about putting these small bits together to create something that's complex in the end. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of a head start, told you a few of the tips. The last thing I want to cover is a little tip for voxel painting. Um, this little flat area I've got here was completely built by me and I'm quite pleased with how the edge of it looks. I've built up this whole cliff around here to try and disguise the fact that I've built it and I think I've managed to come up with a reasonably sort of natural looking shape despite the fact that you're building with circles and squares and that can be quite difficult. So I'm going to show you just a little trick I found for how to go about doing that. This snap to voxel grid is a really nice one to have turned off. It gives you a much smoother control over things. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just turn the distance up. We've got material grass, so that's fine. And I'm just gonna do a bit of internal painting. Now I'm gonna use the circle, but in reality on the rock, it's almost better to use a square like this. So um, actually that's all right, I'll use the square then. What you do, the easiest way to do this and best way to get natural results is actually to sink the block into the surface. And if I press paint now, you can see it's going to just touch the surface a little bit and cover it, kind of take out some of those nasty dents. So if I come down here and actually build something with the square, you can see it, it looks a little bit unnatural. You get these square edges and it's even worse when you're, you're building things on larger scales. So you've got this sort of like this and you're trying to build out lots of terrain at once. And it works quite nice if you continually drag it like this, but you still end up with a result that's got these sort of very square edges. If you then get one of these circles, stick it underneath, you can kind of pull out all of the dents and turn it into something that actually looks kind of natural. So you go around and you can find a square edge like that and I can just add to it a little bit, just pull out the ground. And you can see this is turning it into a shape that actually looks a lot less square and maybe if you just use the edge again you can take off a little bit of this to round it out a little and they're starting to look a lot more like a natural hill already let's take a little bit more off there oh I've gone too much but then again you just dip it underneath and pull backwards and it will fill in the gaps in such a nice way and it works perfectly for when you're using different materials as well so there's a um, rocks grass one that I quite like here for when you're doing um, areas like this where it's not believable that it would be quite so flowery and nice you can get behind it again and you see how that that changed the whole texture without rebuilding it as long as you're underneath like that you can retexture stuff as well and that's how i went about painting this whole thing is i mean admittedly i've you have to take quite a bit of care over it still but I think it comes out with some very nice natural results so that's just a little tip for uh, voxel painting because it is kind of frustrating but you, you can do it in a way that ends up looking quite natural if you spend a bit of time on it especially if you think about things in the way of like what would actually be a natural thing to happen so you can see this actually looks a lot more believable now I've taken some of the grass off because you wouldn't have grass growing there it's a sort of difficult place for grass to grow same way over here where I kind of used a mix of the dirt and the rock and stone sort of textures to try and blend in some of the cliffs etc there you go guys, first video for Medieval Engineers, hope it helped you out, really cool to hear what you guys think of the game so far, yes there's a few problems but I'm quite pleased with what does work and what we can do, I'm quite pleased with how pretty it looks as well, otherwise I hope you found it interesting, hope you found it enjoyable, hope you're looking forward to getting your hands on it Medieval Engineers, if you did please hit like, please hit subscribe, it really helps me and the channel out, and of course stay tuned in for plenty more Medieval Engineers content, so thanks a lot for watching guys, I'll catch you next time.